Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Savers, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a shroud for your lightsaber. Um, it's a, a, des a design cue. Uh, you can build all kinds of different shapes and sizes of shroud. Um, this is my saber called Fulcrum 3, which is my personal saber. Uh, so I'm going to teach you how to build a shroud today. Um, so you're going to need a number of things. Number one is you're going to need to have drawn out and designed your shroud, figuring out where it's going to go, how long it's going to be, what parts it's going to need to fit over. So once you've done all the design work, there's a number of tools and parts that you're going to need. Um, I'm going to go over some of them today. There are this is an example of more than one way to skin a cat. There's lots of different ways to do this. I'll show you a few. So here's some parts that you're going to need. Um, I'm going to recommend a miter box. This is a five, six dollar piece of equipment that you can use in conjunction with a hacksaw and a fine tooth blade for cutting metal. Um, for the purposes of today, I'm going to be using my band saw and a miter saw with a metal cutting blade, which you probably won't have at home. So I'll show you how to do this with the hacksaw. You're also going to need a Dremel or a rotary tool like this one. I use the, the long cable so that I can uh, be a little bit more flexible with it. You're going to need a sanding drum attachment on the Dremel and you're going to need a cutoff wheel attachment with a number of these Dremel number 409 cutoff wheels. Uh, you're going to need of course as always a sharpie and uh, a couple of tools that, I, that I'm going to recommend. A deburring tool for uh, taking off some of the excess metal and the parts that you cut. This is a, uh, a pipe cutter. Now this one's too small to be used for a shroud, but you can get ones that can handle pipe uh, f that are uh, larger than an inch and a half in diameter. You probably need inch and three quarters, something like that, because they are adjustable. But a pipe cutter uh, can be a handy tool for scribing the part. You're going to need some masking tape. You're going to need the shroud material that you'll be using. Uh, for today's example, I'm going to be using the MHS shroud material available at the Custom Saver Shop that's precisely the size that fits over MHS parts. Speaking of MHS parts, I've got a junked one here that I've used for experiments. I'm going to use this for sizing purposes so that I can scratch it up and not be afraid. Um, this is a really handy tool called a caliper. Um, and uh, this is a precise caliper. You don't need one that works as precisely as this. You can get digital ones. Uh, this is a handy tool. Again, this is one that you won't necessarily need, but will be handy for today's example. Let's see, did I go over everything? Oh yeah, sandpaper. Varying degrees of sandpaper. I shouldn't say degrees. Varying grits. This is 220 grit. These are just the sandpaper examples that I used. You can use different ones, but the point is you're going to want a coarse type of sandpaper and you're going to want a fine type of sandpaper. Um, and I think, the, oh, I almost forgot the most important thing, safety. You're going to need safety eyewear, and I'm going to recommend a dusk mask as well for this, uh, for this job. So I know that's a lot of stuff, um, but let's get right into it. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to prep your work. Um, now this is a piece of uh, the uh, MHS sleeve material that you can get at the Custom Saver Shop. Uh, it comes like this. You buy it in lengths or cuts. Um, it's actually a fairly clean finish, but uh, you, you're going to want to polish this um, and get it the finish that you want before you apply the masking tape and get it ready to use. Um, it'll just be so much easier. Some guys will cut their section and then will uh, mount it on a drill so they can spin it and then uh, hit it with various uh, descending uh, or I guess ascending grits of sandpaper. Um, so you want to go from coarse to fine in stages and finally wet sand it so that you can get a, almost a chrome polish on that and then use mother, Mother's Mag Polish, which looks like this. Uh, it's for aluminum to get it uh, almost, almost chrome quality. Um, in the case of what I'm doing, I'm actually building a weathered saber, so I'm going to want the finish to be a little nicer than this, which I've already done, um, but uh, I'm going to scuff it up then when we get going. So, so that's the MHS uh, sleeve material. Um, you can also use, here's an old MHS part that I have for spacing. This is, this is a brass sink tube. You can get chrome. Uh, you'll find that that actually fits really well too. Now this is a very thin material, so if you're working with this, with your Dremel and cutting it off, um, you're going to need to be careful that you don't uh, kink it and bend it. I don't like this uh, as, a, as a shroud material. Just it's too thin. It just, does, it looks, it just doesn't look right to me. Um, for smaller applications, the brass can be nice. Um, but so you're going to want to decide the size and look of your shroud. So this is this is the saber that I'm going to be building. As you can see, the shroud piece here, and there's a secondary one here. It's a very short shroud. It's got a 45 degree cut that's got a twist. It's curved off at the end there, so it's not a straight cut. Um, and there's a couple other things. But that's going to be the shroud that I'm actually building out of this material. 
Um, so what I've got is I've got it polished, I've got the masking tape applied. You want to apply masking tape because for a couple of reasons. One, it gives you a surface to draw on so that you can draw where your shroud's going to go, where your cuts are going to go with your Dremel. Um, and then you can uh, go over those with a nice thick sharpie so that you can see them really clearly where your cuts are going to be. Also, um, for cutting with your hacksaw or spinning with your Dremel, if you miss, we want to do this very carefully, but if you miss and you just touch a part, um, it wouldn't take much on aluminum with the Dremel sanding wheel. You can see right there, I just made a nice big scratch. It doesn't take much, it's a soft metal. This acts like shields. This protects your metal from accidental touches. Now, if you accidentally really gouge it, it's going to go through that and cause damage to your part anyways. So it's just a, a, an extra layer of, uh, it's a precaution. So uh, let's see, we've got that done. We've got the part prepped. We've got the uh, masking tape. Now, you're going to want to decide with, with the shroud that I'm building, Obviously, one side is nice and clean. So we're going to want to create that clean edge. Now, I've got a miter saw with a metal cutting blade that can cut a nice clean edge on there. Uh, you probably don't have that at home. I would highly recommend against using a miter saw if you don't have the right blade. If you try to use a wood cutting blade on aluminum like this, you're going to you're going to wreck the blade at best. At worst, you're going to really injure yourself when pieces start breaking off and flying off, and this thing goes flying across the room. I've seen it happen before, so don't use a, a wood cutting blade on these. Take your time. Um, there's a, a miter box that you can get. Uh, these are just really cheap, and uh, five dollars and forty nine cents. It says right there. And your uh, and your hacksaw. And you can cut a clean edge. This mounts to the edge of your table. I'm not going to go into it in detail into a few in a few moments from now. Um, but you want to cut a clean edge on that. That's where we're going to start. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that first and then I'm going to show you about where to draw the, the lines and, and move on from there. Now for using a hacksaw and a miter box like this, like I, I mentioned, I'm going to be using my, my uh, miter saw to, to cut this nice and clean. But if you were just had a hacksaw and a miter box like this, you can see that there's slots for your saw um, to cut a, you know, a straight 90 degree or a 45 in this direction. So what you're going to want to do is you want to mount this against a really solid workspace and you're going to want to grab that in there. You can even clamp it in, but I prefer to, to use my hand. And you're going to want to line that up, and you want to cut all the way through with your hacksaw. Less teeth, a quality blade, you know, for cutting aluminum is probably going to be your best bet. Um, and so you're going to want to cut all the way until you get a nice, a nice clean cut, which this is not. And the way that you can test that, of course, we're going to need to file it down to make it clean. Is you slide your MHS part in here, and these are this is a, a CNC machined edge. So when you slide it down, you'll be able to see and feel how close you are to a really clean edge around the end there. And uh, if, you, if you're not, you can, this is the, the starting point of this job, you can you know, go another quarter of an inch in, cut another layer off, or better yet, just get a really good rasp file, which I have right here, and use some elbow grease, and just be able to file this down until it matches up with your, your MHS part and gives you a nice clean edge there. Um, we're probably not going to finish off the corners of the edge just yet. Um, we'll do that a little bit later, but that'll get your, your your edge number one if it's a flat edge. Okay, I just used my miter saw and I've got my nice clean edge there. And uh, of course, there's there's little burrs of metal that keep it from from being useful. This is a really neat tool. It's called a deburring tool. There's a little blade on the end there, and uh, if you can get one of these um, at a machine shop or a machine shop supply place, you run it around the inside like that, and you can see it's peeling off the burr of metal, making it a nice clean inside edge, so now it, it slides. I can put my MHS part in there. I can line it up and take a look around, and that that's a really nice clean edge. I'm going to sand that off with some sandpaper when we get going a little further on to finish it, but uh, I've got my number one edge exactly where I want it, so now I'm going to build off of that and decide where I'm going to scribe the rest of my parts. And here's one of the ways you can do that. You want to pick your design. Like I showed you in my design, it's basically a 45 with a curve, so I can't just chop it off at a 45 degree angle. You may be going for more of a graph -like style curve, something like uh, something like that. Now this is not MHS um, sleeve material, this is this is a piece of other aluminum I used in a different saber. Um, but you can see that the curve follows that. If that's what you're going through, for, what you need is a, to make a template. You roll a tube of, of plastic that's going to fit, or plastic, two, you could use plastic, a tube of paper, um, and just a piece of masking tape, just uh, rolling it over top of your uh, your MHS sleeve material, 
And then what you want to do is, if this is my finished edge, I'm basically just sliding this on, you know, and measuring where I want to go. If this was if this was what I wanted, then measuring I've obviously already measured my sleeve what I want. Then I would just use this to line it up, and then I would take the sharpie marker around here somewhere. And I would m just mark that, that line, and that gives me a nice line to follow. And because I, I cut it when it was flat, like this, it's a nice even mark. It's going to give me a really even mark to follow when I'm doing my cutting. Now, that's if that's what you're doing, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is something a little bit different. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. A miter box isn't really helpful. Um, this would be a tricky one to do without a miter saw, because what I'm essentially going to do is cut a 45-degree angle part way through this piece and then using that I'm going to go from that and and draw the rest in so that's the way I'm going to be doing this shroud there are a couple different ways to cut it um, obviously once we cut it we're going to need to do a lot of sanding and fine tuning uh, this is a very labor intensive job but if you take the time and get it right uh, you're going to really be happy with your result okay rather than do this on my uh, miter saw it is a tricky cut on the miter saw probably could have done it if I built a jig for this I'm going to do this on my band saw instead you probably don't have a band saw at home and like I said you'll need to to hack saw out this but if you do have access to a band saw it can be a way with a proper blade to cut curves in a, in a shroud material so it's a slow process Okay, as you can see, I've cut my 45 degree angle cut, not all the way through, and I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this off. Okay, here's a neat little trick that you can do if you've got a caliper like this. Um, because what I want to do is I want to find out the exact center point between where I ended the cut on either side. Because I want my uh, I want my shroud to be, to be even. So what I'm going to do to find these center points is I'm just going to use the caliper, and I'm going to guess where about the middle is. And then I'm going to lock it in. And I'm going to hook one end of the caliper in the end of the cut there. And I'm just going to scribe carefully without scratching the aluminum. I'm going to scribe the, the tape. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hook into this end. And I'm going to scribe the tape again. And I didn't precisely measure that, so it's not precisely halfway. But if you may be able to see, there's two scribe marks. Well, dead center between these two scribe marks is dead center between where my, my uh, cut let off, left off. So I'm going to mark that. Scribe mark here, scribe mark here, dead center is right there. So that's dead center between my two, and I'm just going to use that to eyeball um, where I want to draw the line for the rest of this cut so that it's a little different than the 45 degrees. Okay, as you can see, I've used the Sharpie to, uh, to draw my line where I'm going to continue this cut with my Dremel cutoff wheel and uh, to finish this off. So it may not be exact, and I want to make sure that as I cut it with my Dremel cutoff wheel, I'm still leaving a little bit of the metal on this side that I'll be able to to fine-tune, to, to, to grind off and sand off, um, so I don't want to take too much off. But that's going to be the look of my shroud when I'm finished cutting it off here. Okay, so as you might be able to see, I've got my Dremel and my cutoff wheel. Now this is a cutoff wheel I've already used a little bit, so it's ground down. Usually they're that size. That's how they come. Um, now this is not a Dremel tool. This is a cheap knockoff that uh, I really need to replace, but it's going to do the job. And so what I want to do is I want to fire it up. At a fairly high speed and I basically want to just follow my line. I'm doing this in a place where I've got lots of lots of light and something solid to rest my part against. So I'm going to follow that line and scribe the whole thing before I start pushing through all the way. Okay, as you can see, I've, I've scribed all the way through. Now, that's not cut off yet. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the, the cutoff wheel again, and I'm going to follow my scribe line and cut all the way through until I can pull this piece off of this piece. I can't uh, overstate how careful you need to be doing this. If you've never done it before, you're probably going to want to practice on some pieces to really get a, a feel for it. As you can see, there's a little bit of black left off because I've cut on this side of my line to make sure that I didn't uh, cut too much off because if it's going to be a very rough cut that I'm going to need to sand down. I don't want to sand it down so far that my part is too small. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and then we'll proceed. So I finished my cut. Um, what I didn't mention, because you, uh, you can't see my face off camera, is when you're doing any of this dremeling, 
safety glasses are incredibly important. Good quality safety glasses. And for stuff like this, a dust mask as well, because there's a lot of uh, aluminum bits and dust from the uh, cutoff wheel uh, that's coming off, so a dust mask is advisable. These are um, Dremel number 409 cutoff wheels that I use for this type of job. So, uh, so there's my shroud piece. It's cut off, so I'm going to store that away in my box of parts for another day. And uh, this is the rough cutout of my, of my shroud. So the next step I'm going to want to do with something like this is I'm going to want to clean up these rough edges. And for that I use a sanding drum. There are different grades of sanding drum. And I'm going to use my Dremel sanding drum and I'm going to get a, a clean edge there. Because this is a small radius and I don't want to dig in too much, I'm also going to use a sanding drum that's a larger size on my drill press because um, that gives a nice, uh, the sanding drum helps get the curve that I'm looking for in these these parts here. Um, so that sanding drum I'm going to use on my drill press. I'm going to clean this up and uh, and show you what the next step will look like once I've done that. I've used my sanding drum and I've uh, finished off the edges so it's a lot cleaner and uh, it's a lot more even what I want. And now what I'm going to do is with varying grits of sandpaper I'm going to fold them up and uh, the reason I like to fold them up is they become stiff. Because what I want to do is I want to be able to sand this without the sandpaper flopping over and sanding this. At least not yet. When I sand this, the inside, it's going to be in a, a motion that's this way and I don't want to go circular and I don't want to go across. Um, at least if I wanted to keep it really clean looking. Because it's weathered, I may do that. But I basically want to be able to allow this to contour with my finger. So you can see it there. And allow the contour to match the contour of the inside of this. And so this is, you know, time consuming, is just the time it takes to sand the edge until it becomes really uniform and even and clean. And then I'm going to move down to a, a, a higher grit sandpaper, which is a lot, a lot finer to, to finish that up. Okay, I've finished my initial sanding as the edge of the edge. And as you can probably see, um, I'm going to go over it again when I finalize this piece. But for right now, that's a really nice clean edge that I've been able to achieve with different grits of sandpaper from coarse um, down to a finer one um, to get that edge. I've also uh, cleaned up this edge by sliding, taking a flat piece of sandpaper, holding it down and sliding the base like that along there. It's giving me a much cleaner edge on the back. I'll continue to finish that up a little bit and then it'll be time to take off the masking tape. Okay, one more run around the inside of this end with the uh, deburring tool just to make sure it's nice and clean. It's not going to catch. Um, my edges are clean, so now I'm going to take off the masking tape and uh, take a look at how it how it looks. Now this masking tape's been on here for a while, so sometimes if it's been on for a while, it leaves a residue. A methyl hydrate or uh, acetone or something like that will uh, will clean that off really nicely um, before you finalize the piece. And depending on the quality of your tape as well. So you can see there's a bit of tape residue in there. And on the outside area where the tape was, this is kind of a sharp, jagged edge. I don't want to use my deburring tool on this um, because that's uh, it's going to dig in and catch in the metal and give me an, an inconsistent kind of finish. So, so that's my part. Um, I want to test it on the piece that I'm going to be using it with. Just to make sure it fits nicely and lines up and I got the length right. In this case I want mine to, to meet flush with that. And my piece is gonna. That's gonna be. Uh, what mine's gonna look like. I'm gonna drill some holes to uh, to mount it with set screws that are putting pressure on it from the inside of this piece. So all you see is a little hole as opposed to a big bolt that uh, tacks the thing on. And then I'm gonna do a set screw through there. But to finish off the piece, I'm gonna take my folded over sanded paper, and I'm gonna just very gently. You want to be careful not to brush it against the finished aluminum that you took so much time to polish up before. And I basically want to take, take some time and just go around the outside edge and make sure that, uh, that this outside edge is clean and it's not going to cut anybody because um, as you probably have found if you, once you've tried this a couple times, those little jagged edges and slivers of aluminum um, are not cool and not part of a finished high-end lightsaber. So I want to take some time and do this and, uh, and then my part is done. I uh, probably want to do the same thing with the outside of this. But anyways, I'm going to continue that off camera. But essentially that is how to build a shroud for your lightsaber. So I hope that helps uh, in your designing and building your lightsaber with a shroud. Um, again, 
practice makes perfect. You probably want to practice this a few times on some parts that you don't really care that much about before you really apply it to that special perfect piece for your lightsaber. Um, and as always with jobs like this, take your time. Take your time, do it slowly, do it right. You'll be really happy with the result. There's nothing more frustrating than doing a job, rushing it, wrecking something, and just not being entirely happy with the result. Take your time, be happy with the result, be proud of what you've accomplished. So again, thanks for watching.